Welcome to part one of the Scroll Driven Animations playlist. Today we're starting with the most important property behind scroll animations, animation timeline, scroll. This property connects your animation to pages scroll, so it plays as you move. Let's see. On this page, I've added a reading indicator at the top. It starts with no width and expands until it fills the entire page. Right now, the animation runs for two seconds using normal CSS keyframes and the default document timeline, which resets every time the page reloads. To make this animation scroll-driven instead of time-based, we can use a scroll timeline. A scroll timeline tracks how far you've scrolled, 0% at the top and 100% at the bottom, and uses that progress to control the animation. We just need two things in CSS, the scroll function and the animation timeline property. The scroll function creates the scroll timeline and animation timeline connects it to the animation. Once you apply both to the reading indicator, the animation follows your scroll. Since time isn't involved anymore, you can remove the duration or set it to auto. As you scroll down, the indicator grows, and when you scroll back up, it reverses. If you stop scrolling, the animation pauses right where it is. One important note, make sure you set animation timeline after the animation shorthand, or it will reset. To make the bar grow from the left side, set Transform Origin to 0.50%. If you skip this, the animation scales from the center and expands in both directions. Setting the Transform Origin makes the animation move the way we expect. That was pretty cool and easy, right? But how does the scroll function actually work? The scroll function creates a scroll timeline by finding the nearest parent that can scroll. In this example, that scroll container is the root element, so the animation follows the page scroll in the block direction. You can control this by passing two values to scroll, the scroller and the axis. The scroller can be nearest, root, or self, and the axis can be block, inline, x, or y. You can write them together, like scroll, root block. Here's a small tool that lets you change the values on the fly and see what they do. By default, scroll uses nearest block, meaning it tracks the closest scrollable container. If this doesn't work when scrolling the root, you can change the scroller value to root. This makes the animation track only the root scroller. Using self makes the animation follow the element's own scroll. Setting the axis to block or inline tracks progress along that specific axis of the scroll container. You can also combine values, like nearest inline. If you want an axis that doesn't depend on the writing mode, you can use X or Y. One thing to remember, if nothing is scrollable, the animation won't run at all. And that's it. With just a few lines of CSS, we turned a regular animation into a scroll-driven one. Simple, powerful, and really cool.